But she's doing massive damage right here. And just look at all of these enemies right now. This is this is actually kind of crazy. There was a Sturgeon Marauder on the enemy's side? What? What are you doing here, Sturgeon Marauder? Get out of there. Okay, let's try and just murder these guys as best we can. Oh, yeah, they just got absolutely sandwiched between all of those fellas. That was very good. They, they probably found it quite enjoyable, let's face it. Hello and welcome back to our Sturgeon Viking. And we're going to be declaring war against the Azerai almost immediately here. Personally, I do not believe this is a good idea, but we're going to do it nevertheless. Just for the sake of all the Sturgeons being happy and, you know, hopefully we're going to do a perfectly fine job. But anyway, we are on our way to Uthalem Castle because I have indeed... Uh, yes, we had another war declaration upon us and that was indeed against the northern empire they really do not have a very good combat strength any further so it is going to be extremely easy or at least i hope so for us to be able to take this and potentially eliminate the remaining forces of the northern empire if we take a look at their combat strength yeah we're by the way at war against pretty much everyone in the entire game now so northern empire yes they only have 3200 that's actually pretty significant in comparison to the western as you can see they have basically over double their combat strength which is kind of unfortunate the southern empire is also in a similar position so the empire is generally not doing very well anyway i have changed my army composition because obviously we were talking in the previous episode about army compositions and um you know attempting to try and get some additional tactical options because obviously variety is indeed the spice of life and well maybe it's going to be something quite nice for us to try and do that anyway what i've done we have the same infantry units of course they are probably the best that we can possibly get as the sturgeons and then i have a couple of sturgeon cavalry i can actually show you but i kind of want to get this siege camp up and running as soon as possible but anyway i'm just going to tell you anyway so oh Really? Okay. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that they decided to go straight on in here. Let's take a look at their army composition. I guess I'll just tell you what I have uh, when we're actually in the battle, but let's take a look here. They really don't, don't have a huge amount of recruits. That is a bit problematic, as you can see. Ooh, okay, this is interesting. What is their, what is the bulk of their army? What is the bulk of their army? I can't actually tell because as you no doubt see at the top of the screen right there, you have Imperial Legionaries. They've got 16 of those. They have uh, 15 Imperial Sergeant Crossbowmen. Those guys are going to be kind of harsh. The uh, Imperial Elites, they have 13 of those. They have one Cataphract. I don't exactly know where their main bulk of their army is because they have over a thousand units. It doesn't really make sense. So I, I guess we'll see what happens here and we'll try it out anyway my army composition all right so as i said before sturgeons basically the same things variag huskals they're the greatest thing that i can possibly get as the sturgeons we, we do want to keep that same theme as much as we possibly can because i do very much enjoy using them um uh, although personally i feel like azurai infantry is probably a little bit better although these are indeed noble units so it is a little bit better in terms of statistics but i personally prefer the way that azurai infantry play because they generally come equipped with thrown weapons and the huskals do not so that is obviously a big disparity there because otherwise if you if these were azurai infantry they would literally just throw i don't know three four javelins at the opponent and their whole front line would probably be murdered uh, at least the first little bit of the front line at least so anyway let's just move these guys Guys, we'll put them into a nice shield wall here as well and yeah i have cavalry i've got um some sturgeon cavalry and i also have some imperial cavalry and um, hopefully that's going to provide us with a pretty significant increase in the amount of tactical options we have because let's face it we haven't really had a huge amount of those in recent memory and it would be quite nice oh look at this look at this this is absolutely fantastic this is the reason also by the way why i decided to get a horse 
because it makes a huge amount of sense to do that. I'm gonna tell my infantry to charge in. Look at our cavalry right now. We're right behind enemy lines. I do, by the way, also have a couple of skirmishers in the form of Sturgeon Marauders. I know someone actually did mention those in the comments and I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely would like to get some of those. And luckily enough, I was able to scavenge a couple from my various garrisons. Cause you gotta remember that my garrisons are gaining units from varieties of different vassals and in, indeed different sources as well. Usually vassals, what they'll do is when, when a uh, particular fief has just been taken, they will place a bunch of free units in there. And that's where most of my units are coming from. I know someone actually said that I, uh, I, I used the command, I used the console command to gain all my, uh, all my Varyag Haskals. Yeah, I don't play with cheat mode. <laughs> I don't play with cheat mode on. I didn't even know there was a command like that. That's pretty amazing. Now, that's actually something that is quite, quite uh, interesting to me. Having a command like that, okay, if I knew about that command uh, ahead of time, well, I, w I still wouldn't use it because I actually don't play with cheat mode on at all. The only time that I played the cheat mode on was way back, if, if um, some of you were around at that point. I played with cheat mode on in one episode of the Kuzade Carnate series, literally just because at the time the game was still relatively new and I wanted to try out a variety of different things. I wanted to test out some of the functionalities that the game had to offer just for curiosity's sake. You know, generally, if you are a big fan of a particular game like I am with the Mount of Blade series, then you generally want to try and find out everything about it. At least that's what I, I try to do with, with certain games, especially with a game that allows you to have so much freedom indeed. But yeah, anyway, you'd think that uh, if I knew about that particular command, and indeed was using it. Why would I install all these mods that give me additional experience if I'm just gonna literally spawn units out of thin air? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why would I have all these mods installed? I'd basically just go like, ah, oh, yes, I'm, I'm playing without any mods. I'm going super hardcore about this. And uh, I'm playing, I'm making sure that I, I uh, don't buy any workshops or anything like that, because let's face it, if you're giving yourself units, then you're also going to give yourself money. I mean, you know, if you're doing it, you might as well go full out, right? <laughs> and I haven't given myself money at all. You've seen that. You've seen every single time I've gone to the marketplace, I have always shown you exactly what I'm selling. And indeed, it is literally just the loot that I have from all of the battles that we have so far participated in. And uh, that's what I mean. Like, I wouldn't be using Bannerlord tweaks to increase my experience gain and indeed the experience gain of my units if I was just gonna spawn a whole bunch in. <laughs> you know? Like for example, I would definitely use cheat mode if I was gonna do a special feature of some particular mod. Unfortunately, there are not that many total conversions for Bannerlord currently released. And as a result, special features are uh, very, difficult to record because uh, most of the time uh, I, I, I'm aware of that one. Um, what, what is it called again? I think there are two actually. One is a Warhammer based mod and I was very intrigued about that because I actually like the world of Warhammer. I think it was a Warhammer fantasy mod. I think so. Warhammer fantasy mod. So you got, you know, you got the orcs and you got the uh, uh, the Empire and you've got the chaos and all that stuff and I'm just like yeah I'd love to do that and I tried to get it to work actually I tried to get it to work however it was only compatible at least at the time with a beta version of one of the one of the number versions um, and uh, that version was not available any further when I actually went to go and install it so <laughs> I think my timing was just significantly off at that point but anyway the point is that is the only time that I would really use cheat mode because I want to try and demonstrate as many aspects of the game as I possibly can so if we wanted to test out a particular unit if I could figure out the command to spawn it in and I could show you exactly how the unit is what kind of gear it's got and all that stuff then that is 
facilitating a much better overall experience and overview of that particular mod. And that's what I used to do in Warband as well. You know, I used to use cheat mode, you know, to, to get all of these things into the game so that I can demonstrate the mod to you, whether it's worth your time. That's the point. Is it worth your time to download this 4GB mod? You know, because some people don't have the fastest of connections. I, I for sure don't. You know, it takes me quite a while to download some things. But that's the point. That's the reason why I make these videos, because then it can give you more information about what you want to do. You know, do you want to download Prophecy of Pandora? Well, you obviously do, because this is that's probably the, the uh, one of the best, if not the best, um, total conversion overall mod um, that uh, enhances everything about the base game and Warband that you could possibly want, pretty much. So obviously that's worth it, but if you didn't know, if you didn't know it was worth it, and you're just trying to figure out and gain some information about that particular mod, then how, how are you going to get that without exploring every facet of the game? And now bear in mind, even if I was, now this is what's, this is what's amusing about this, even if I was to use cheat mode in Prophecy of Pendor, I would still not be able to show you the entirety of that mod because it is just so incredibly complex and in-depth and that's that's a testament to the mod itself isn't it you know that i'm not able to show you everything no one would be able to show you every single thing about that mod in under half an hour or under an hour even using cheat mode and and that's exactly my point. There's 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 nothing that uh, I, there's no reason for me to actually use cheat mode in Bannerlord whatsoever, um, because I have a lot more fun not using it. And this is an actual series, you know. Obviously, once all the total conversions come out, and I start uh, doing a couple of special features and things, then yeah, I I, I would probably um, you know go and enable cheat mode. But I don't even have the console um, the console mod installed, you know. And uh, I, I'm, I'm pressing control and that little icon right now to open up the console and it's not it's not working because I obviously don't have it installed. <laughs> I haven't had it installed for a while. The only time that I had it installed was when I was trying to fix the original Barney's... Um, uh, what was it now? He was having a bug or like a glitch uh, crash issue with um, attempting to execute the last remaining vassals. For those of you that were there at the start of our journey into Bannerlord, then props to you, because maybe you remember that as well, where we were trying to execute the last remaining vassals, and every single time I would execute one of these vassals, the game would crash. And I would be like, why? Why is it crashing? Why is it crashing on me? And so I would basically try extremely hard to um, uh, find some kind of solution to that. Because what I wanted to do was actually try and figure out how this is going to work and what's actually going to happen if you were to execute every single Lord in a particular faction. I thought that would be very interesting to find out. And so... I found some I found some console commands. I installed the developer console mod because you do need a mod to be able to activate that as far as I remember. Maybe they've changed that now. I actually don't know. But um, yeah, so I installed that and tried to make it work. I showed it actually. I, I recorded the, the, the whole process of um, how I was trying to you know, fix that, that issue because I thought that maybe if I removed the vassal using a console command then I thought that maybe the problem was my execution of them so if I didn't execute them like actually go through with the action that I would be able to maybe then you know get something going and actually you know see what happens eventually oh what I, I Seni is moving around really fast what she's moving around super quickly have you noticed that that is insane but she's doing massive damage right here. And just look at all of these enemies right now. This is this is actually kind of crazy. There was a Sturgeon Marauder on the enemy side. What? What are you doing here, Sturgeon Marauder? Get out of there. Okay, let's try and just murder these guys as best we can. Oh, yeah. They just got absolutely sandwiched between all of those fellas. That was very good. They, they probably found it quite enjoyable, let's face it. But anyway, let's just try and eliminate more of these malicious spearmen. But yeah, that's basically the last time that I had um, any kind of developer console installed. And um, yeah, 
as I say, there's literally no point for me to have any of the mods that I have installed if I'm using the developer console to just spawn in units. So <laughs> I don't even know why I do that. That would just basically ruin the, the whole series pretty much, uh, unless it's obviously focused entirely on trying to break the game as much as I possibly can. But no, I'm actually not trying to do that whatsoever. Anyway, there you go. That is indeed the end. Oh, look at that. Four, really? Four deaths? Are you serious? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I should probably also show you my um, my damage modifiers and stuff like that. All right, so we took Uthalame Castle, and I am, uh, I actually just sneezed just now, that's why I cut, uh, that's why I cut there, but, um, yeah, there you go, there's the, there's the thing, I mean, I could, that's the thing, you, you, you might not believe me now, because there's a cut, but, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it in, I'm just gonna cut out my sneeze, because obviously, who wants to hear someone sneeze, right, so I'm just gonna cut out the sneeze, but I'm just gonna leave everything else, so you can actually see exactly what's going on with my, uh, uh damage modifiers and so on, because I don't really want to, act as though I'm hiding something, you know, I, I can't believe it's really come to that way where, where people don't actually believe, you know, what I'm saying, but okay, <laughs> it happens, it happens. All right, well, there you go. We actually took Uthalame Castle. This is looking much more respectable, isn't it? Look at that. That looks so much better. Very nice indeed. And now we're running around with an army that is, in my opinion, pretty much capable of running to the next thief almost immediately and hopefully us being able to do something with it um i'm not entirely sure who to give this to to be honest he's already the owner of talavel castle miron so i guess i might as well do this and we'll try to gain some good relation with him as well because we do have the opportunity to do so and voting for them is going to make a little bit of sense but does it does it really make any difference i'm not entirely sure whether it makes any difference at this point because they don't need to like me to stay with the faction they need to like the liege of the faction i suppose i'm gonna try to take pen Canock, i think oh miron oh Mir wait 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 miron miron come, come, come back over here come over here sir I would like to manage my army real quick. Miron, yes, you are going to join me. Very nice. Oh, yes. That is a significant increase in the amount of units that we have. And hopefully his engineering skill is going to contribute quite nicely too. And uh, make our construction just that much faster. Ah, oh, yes, I actually forgot to do a little bit of executing. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. We took all of them prisoners, so it kind of makes sense for us to kind of get them eliminated as much as we possibly can and uh, well let's see what happens let's see if any clans are eliminated it's highly unlikely that that is going to happen oh there we go the northern empire has now elected someone else as their ruler because obviously we just murdered the guy that was was uh, the current one i suppose and uh, otherwise we should be pretty much ready to start bombarding the walls quite soon all right, so under the cover of night, we are going to be attacking Pen Canock here. And I think after this particular siege, I will be disbanding our army, even though it is possible for us to continue on with, with them. They have started to run out of food supplies, and I am now basically supporting the entirety of all of our vassals that have joined us. And I think that might be a little bit too costly for me over time. But let's get in here. Let's try and do some damage. Oh yes. Ah, uh, unfortunately, I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit trapped. A little bit trapped. Thank you. Let's get out of there. There we are. Nice. Okay. Oh, they're on the run. They're on the run already. Are you serious? Come on. That that soon? I wouldn't have expected that. But okay. Anyway, as I say, what we're going to do is we'll disband the army after this, and then we'll probably go on a bit of a hunt for the remaining Batanian vassals because what I would like to test out because I think I've done that before but they might have changed the behavior surrounding that I'm not entirely sure if they have but if they have then it would be pretty cool to find out exactly what's going on so basically what I'd like to do is execute every single vassal in Batania or in Vlandia either one and then see what happens to the fiefs because last time I did that it switched the owner 
to the last remaining faction that was not mine, which is obviously kind of <laughs> kind of imbalanced in some way or another because I basically did all the work and then it switched to the uh, <laughs> to the largest faction on the map. So that was actually kind of bad. But, well, I I'd like to test it out. Even if it does switch, I don't really mind too much because it just means that we can bring even more enemy vassals out of the woodwork and we can do even more damage to them and weaken them up just that much more. So I'm happy with it either way. Either way, don't really mind. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't even won this yet. I mean, where, where are the main bulk of the enemy forces? Because as far as I can see, most of them are running away. It seems like it at the very least. Oh, nice. That was a nice hit. Not that one, though. Oh, that was a nice hit. Okay, apparently I'm alternating. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. Oh, this is a this is a nice bulk of enemy units. You know, Iceni's athletics is not actually that high level, but for some reason she's running extremely fast. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. No, we lost another one. Okay, well, we lost, <laughs> we lost another vassal, which is to be expected, of course, but... Well, what can you do? What can you do? Seems like the death mechanic really does favor killing off vassals, especially in sieges. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I guess there is something definitely in the code somewhere that is basically being like, hey, I'm going to increase your death chances by 10,000 fold if you go into that siege. So yeah, apparently that's what's going on there. Anyway, this has been taken. I'm actually thinking that I might try to trade away a whole bunch of money. Mm, nice. Okay, yeah, we can... Oh, that might be a little bit too much. Don't really want to get rid of every single thing. Uh, wow, just this is exactly what I'm talking about. Who needs the cheat mode? Who needs the cheat mode right now? I don't. I certainly don't. Look at that. It's crazy. The amount of money that we can gain is just insanity. It really is. Anyway, there you go. We are going to be disbanding this army. There we go. And they are going to go off and do whatever they want to do. Now, technically, strategically, this is not the best fief to take, but I kind of wanted to just cut off their last remaining town and their control over it. That's basically what I wanted to do. So let me actually now just take a quick look. Okay, so who do they have? They have this person. Last seen at Lanark Hen Castle. Okay, that is extremely close by here. So let's see if we can hunt down the last remaining vassals in the Batanians and uh, see what happens to the remaining castles. Maybe they're going to be uh, switching over to us or maybe they'll switch over to the Vlandians or something like that. I actually have no idea, but I suppose we'll find out in due time. We're going to give this to Miron, even though I do not trust him as far as I can throw him. But we are going to try and just give him a chance. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but personally I think he's going to leave the faction as soon as he possibly can. Alright, so this is going to be a pretty interesting conversation, and I don't believe I even know this guy. I think he's one of the new vassals potentially, but anyway, we're going to be attempting to try and persuade him. Uh, I don't even really care about him actually joining us, but I want to try and barter for his castles. That is the main thing that I would like to do here. So if we can make it work, then that's obviously going to be really nice. But if we can't, then he's going to get killed. <laughs> he will just be executed straight up. So as you could, oh, wow. OK, never mind. OK, never in a million years. I will never in a million years be able to persuade this guy, even if I give him six million. Oh, if I do give him six million, then he's actually, oh, what, what? He's actually willing to join us for 1.6. That's actually kind of crazy, but I don't really care about anything else apart from stealing all his castles. Let's see how much that's going to cost me. 4 million. 
Is that even worth it? I, I don't even know, to be honest. Four million for him to join us and then to have four castles and then he can join us for how long? I don't even know how long he's going to really stay with us. But you know what? I'm actually going to do this. I think this is a terrible, terrible idea and certainly not something that I'd recommend doing for you. But I'm doing it just because I want to see what he decides to do after this. It's going to be quite interesting to see. All right. There you go. That's nice. Okay, so uh, what did I actually gain? Okay, so I gained this castle here, this castle here, and this castle here. Well, that's absolutely terrible positioning right there. This is probably the worst, and we'll almost certainly get taken very, very soon indeed. But, well, that is to be expected. I don't really mind too much because he's probably going to be a decent... Uh, a decent addition to our faction, at least a little bit. And uh, that's actually something that I think needs to be changed as well. I think you should be able to barter with enemy vassals even without attempting to persuade them to join you. I think that there needs to be a wartime trading option at the very least. I think that would make... A lot of sense but yeah well yeah it really depends really depends on what the developers want to do you know I mean if they want to do it this way then that's absolutely fine I don't really mind but it is going to cost us a lot more cash to do that as you can see right here this guy's got 3.7 million I will not even be able to persuade him with 2.5 million there's no way ever of me being able to gain either of these the castle is probably going to be pretty easy to get yeah if i had another million or so i could probably get there maybe maybe another two million even but yeah it's never going to happen that i'll be able to get this guy unfortunately maybe if i only was to barter with him then that would probably be okay but because i know him and because the rules stipulate that if i know the guy then i will be uh, indeed executing him although actually i maybe i haven't even been sticking to that i'm not entirely sure at this point it's all a blur it's a bit of a blur of you know axes and heads rolling all over the place so yeah i don't really know to be honest but i think um yeah speaking of attempting to uh, try to track down a number of um, Batanian vassals, I have been trying to do that, and as far as I'm aware, the um, majority of vassals that are left over are actually prisoners in Dunglanus itself. I think. Uh, there are no prisoners here, really? What about the keep then? No one's in the keep either, because I was actually looking at her and as you can see last seen at Dunglanus today which is here and I went in here let me actually just have a look at the alt menu and see whether she's actually there no she's not so as far as I'm aware this is kind of like a ghost vassal or something like that it seems like it's not actually working yet as you can see right there look at that last seen at Dunglanus she's not dead either she's not dead so I don't know where I might be able to find her this is very strange this is very strange. This is the kind of thing that generally tends to happen to me quite often when attempting to execute every single person in a particular faction. I think it is probably on purpose. I think it's probably by design. The developers probably have not really... Um, they don't really have the contingency plan for someone that is just literally going to execute every single person potentially because I'm so solidified in my position in Sturgia there's no way that they can get rid of me right now or at least I hope so because <laughs> if they can then that is going to be pretty awful anyway this guy is out by his lonesome and I will be attempting to attack him let's have a look at what he's actually doing I think he is the leader of his clan yes indeed he is and wait a minute He's, wait a minute, he's the lead, oh, he's this guy, okay, okay, yeah, 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 uh, okay, let's just uh, take him down, let's just take him down, we're gonna, we're gonna try to persuade the next leader of this clan, because these two are kind of, um, as far as I'm aware, I do remember them being quite stubborn, so uh, now, now that two of them have fallen, maybe the next one will want to be a little bit more talkative with us, maybe a little bit more open to negotiations, or at least I can hope so. So yeah, it seems to me like the Batanian menace is not going to be 
executed anytime soon either, which is somewhat unfortunate. I haven't seen any Batanian vassals at all, by the way. I've only been seeing a huge amount of Azurai running around here, and that's pretty much it. So it seems to me like they are probably ghost vassals, probably not even in the game, not even running around or anything like that. I think they generally are just there to prevent the faction from switching sides because maybe uh, Tailworlds has something in mind for when this actually happens and they haven't been able to implement it just yet because obviously game development takes a lot of time it does it takes a lot of time takes a lot of resources and everything so I guess we just have to be patient about that and it seems like I will have to do things the old-fashioned way by besieging the last of their castles or at least I will try to do just that anyway if you enjoyed this episode then please leave a like it is greatly appreciated I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.